Hi everyone, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com and today I want to show you how to make a DIY macrame chandelier with twinkle lights. This chandelier is perfect for indoors or outdoors and doesn't require any electrical wiring. Let me show you how to make it. I used one large embroidery hoop that was 18 inches in size and then I found a whole lot of on clearance macrame twisted cord. So you're just going to need to cut some cord to your desired length of your chandelier. So I wanted my chandelier to be about 12 inches long, so I just multiplied that length by 4 to give me 48 inches. So just decide on the length of your chandelier and multiply it by 4, and then you're going to cut all of your cord. So I am cutting 24 pieces of cord for my chandelier. I'll leave a link in the description box below with a little calculator that will help you decide how much cord you need to buy. Then after you cut all of your lengths of cord, you're going to fold them in half like this and do what's called a lark's head knot. So you just fold it over the embroidery hoop like this and then you take the end of your folded length of cord and pull it through the loop that you've created. And that is called a lark's head knot. So you're going to take all of your lengths of macrame cord and you're going to do the same thing all the way around the embroidery hoop. So fold your cord in half like this Fold it around the embroidery hoop like this and then pull the end of your cord through the loop you created just like this. And repeat this for all 24 of your cord lengths. So just ignore that chain in the middle. I'm going to show you what I actually did here for this hanging chain and it actually was a far better way to do it. So I'm going to go a little bit backwards here in this tutorial but I hope you can forgive me and still follow along. So here are my final couple pieces of macrame cord attached to my embroidery hoop with that lark's head knot. So just ignore all the extra macrame down here, pretend it's just the lark's head knots on here. I'm using some chandelier chain, this is in a pretty bronze color, and I'm just cutting it to the size I want it to be to hang my chandelier. So I think I have about 24 loops on my chain here and I'm using pliers to open and close the links on my chain to attach it directly to my embroidery hoop. So I'm attaching it to two spots in my embroidery hoop that are exactly opposite one another. So that creates the, per the first part of my hanging section of my chandelier. Then I'm doing the same thing so I'm attaching one length of a chain to the embroidery hoop and then I'm going to cut it off so just half of the size of this first chain so about 11 chains I cut it off and then I'm going to attach it to the center of my first chain. I'm just creating a nice hanging system that has four points attaching to my macrame chandelier. I found in the end this was the best way to hang it. So there's my third part of the hanging chain and then my last part here I'm just again pulling the chain links apart, attaching it directly to the embroidery hoop and then making sure I'm counting the correct number of links and attaching it to the center of the top of my system here. And then when you open up your chains, you're going to just wanna squeeze them shut nicely with the pliers when you're finished just so nothing falls apart. Then what you're going to want to do is hang up your chandelier on a curtain rod or somewhere high up a hook would work or where you're going to hang it in the end. And then you need to take a ruler, make sure that your macrame cord is evenly spaced apart. You're going to want to squish two together and then equally space all the rest. Next you're going to make a square knot, so you're making it directly underneath the lark's heads knots you created with two of your macrame cords. So you take the far right cord, put it in a backwards L over top the middle, take the left cord, put it over and under that same L, and then you're going to do the same thing in the reverse. I'll leave a link in the description box below so you can see a square knot and how it's done. So 
So after I do square knots all the way around the top of my chandelier, I'm going to do some more square knots. But this time I'm taking two pieces of my cord from the left and two from the right. So I'm going to start to create a diamond pattern. So same thing, I'm just doing a square knot just like this. And you can decide how far down you want this next section to be. Mine's about two inches from the first square knot section. I eyeballed this. You could use a ruler if you want to make it really precise. I was kind of just eyeballing as I went and I was really happy with the results in the end. So after you've done one, continue along around your whole chandelier just like this, taking two from each section to create a diamond pattern. Then after you do one row like that, you're going to continue by pulling two from the left, two from the right, the next row down and doing the square knot again. So you're, as you can see, this diamond pattern is emerging when you do it like this. And also, as you can see why I showed you that four point chain hanging system at the beginning rather than this one, because this one kept falling on me. So definitely do the hanging chain on your embroidery hoop before we start to do the rest of the macrame. So you're just going to continue in this fashion around your embroidery hoop with this diamond pattern using square knots and eyeballing or measuring how far down you want your square knots to be staggered. So I did four rows of square knots to create this pattern and then I took the bottom of my embroidery hoop and I'm wrapping my cord around it like this to kind of hold it in. And I'm doing my final row of square knots wrapped around the bottom embroidery hoop. And this is what's going to hold it on to the chandelier. So I put the back two cords behind the embroidery hoop and then the front perimeter cords in front. And then I created my square knot to hold that embroidery hoop in place. So just do that all the way around the chandelier until you're finished and just make sure that as you're doing that your chandelier stays nice and even and that your embroidery hoop is also nice and even as well. So once you're finished doing your last set of square knots all the way around the bottom of the embroidery hoop, you're going to tie knots to the bottom fringe part of your chandelier just like this. So just regular old knots and just tie them all the way around the chandelier. And then you can trim your fringes to be the desired length that you wanted. I made mine about six inches long. And then the reason why I suggested twisted macrame cord at the beginning was because I love the effect when you pull the twists apart. It creates a really nice textured fringe on the bottom. So just go around and pull all your twisted rope apart after you've trimmed it to create this nice textured fringe. So you might remember these copper fairy lights that I got from Amazon. I'll leave a link to them in the description box below. I just love the color and I love that they came with a remote. So I'm going to use these in this chandelier so you don't actually need to wire this chandelier anywhere. So I'm just taking them and wrapping them around the bottom embroidery hoop of my chandelier. So just kind of going in a almost bicycle spokes pattern, just wrapping them from side to side to side so that they're evenly spaced on the bottom of your chandelier. And 
And here's what my macrame chandelier looks like when I'm finished that. And you can see I just put the battery pack kind of in the center above my copper fairy lights because you don't really see it unless you're standing directly beneath it. And I think the look is really good. I can use my remote to turn these on from anywhere. I like how it looks in my studio. And I also like how it looks on our front porch here for summer. So it's definitely a really versatile piece and I think it's really unique looking and I'm really happy with how it turned out. Also, I'll be sharing some more photos of my summer and spring styled porch on my blog tomorrow, so make sure to check the DIYMommy.com for those photos. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more DIY and decor ideas.